Good morning. Just a little update. I'm uh, got a half a dozen projects going on, and uh, this is the the 1896 uh, star lathe that I drove home. I don't know last year, a couple years ago, and I pulled it out, and I got some plans. I've been tearing it apart and cleaning it up. And you know how this stuff is. It's it's a pretty good shape. The uh, the serial number, if you can read it, is sixty-eight thirteen. And what I decided is to switch out uh, this other star lathe I have which this is a 03 this is the reason I built the trailer in the first place and I got that 96 but this one is uh, this one's four feet long and that other lathe is is five feet long and I really like like this one came with the lathes and the chip pan which I didn't get with the older one I did get the, the jack pulley and the, the right cone pulley and everything that goes with it and uh, that's right here I got a little bit of a mess <laughs> That's the one that goes with the old lathe. So my idea is to just take the lathe body off here and bolt it to these feet. Leave this foot on so that the so that the lathe body will set on top of that and won't bolt to it. And then it'll come out about a foot farther which is out here and I'll build a support come off here in the structure and you just use a piece of quarter inch plate uh, drilled for the size of the the holes in the in the bed and bolt it to it and uh, that's one of the little projects I got lined up here to do And uh, <laughs> tell me what you think. It'll be kind of a hybrid. I mean, the parts are all Seneca Falls, but the lathe bed will be a little longer. Uh, this one, I'm, I'm trying to make the trailer go earlier. And I found out that because of uh, this, this is an 03, it's got the gear covers here. And the the 96 does not have gear covers, and because I replaced that WP Davis lathe with this uh, WF J Barnes uh, number six, and it says number 13 right there, the thread uh, tag says a number 13 lathe, but if I don't know if you can see it. This one is cast on the, the lathe body. It says the number six. So I don't know if this was a transitional piece, but I like the way they did the ways. The ways are underneath. They're not on top. They're underneath, which uh, apparently was an early way to do it. And, and it didn't uh, didn't take with the more modern lays, but it's a pretty cool way of doing it. This is the the slide rest or the apron. I'm going to clean it up with a 96, which will go on there, and it all looks in pretty good shape. Everything's there on this one, and. Uh, this this one, I don't know if you remember in the earlier 
video, I found out that the uh, pieces were missing out of the slide rest. And this slide rest is actually another Starlade I got, which I believe is a, it, it's got 1920, I think is the latest patent date. So this is a later slide rest. I really appreciate uh, Seneca Falls uh, Lathe Company of uh, maintaining uh, they didn't change the dimensions on their lathes so so these all fit and uh, and here's what happened a friend of mine come over now this is my first lathe right here and just to show you how much I don't know about lathes if you look at the spindle there's what one two three threads showing and when I put this four jaw this four jaw fits on there and it would wobble in the in the past videos I probably showed that and and I took it off a friend of mine came over which knows a lot more about machining than I do and, and he said there's your problem right there I'm not sure if it got broke and ground down or they cut it off who knows but uh, we lost a lot of thread so the 96 is right here and look at this now I put the four jaw chuck on this headstock and it turns uh, concentric, uh, doesn't wobble or anything. So I think that's going to solve a lot of my problems. This, this lathe had a lot more problems than I'd realized. I'd made it work. When you chuck up a piece of wood like I did on the hubs up there and you turn them down as long as you don't take it out of the chuck or change anything you can drill it out and get it concentric and 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 get it fairly close i uh i want to show you this i i just got this this is a, a big uh wood pulley which is the biggest one i have now i i think i measured it about it's, uh, 34 inches in diameter and uh this one definitely it's got to go on the trailer it, it it might be a dry pulley or or it might just be for looks now up here i did put this one up here i think this is a 30 inch but the last time i i turned the hubs down on this on that uh oh three starlight the the hubs did uh i've been thinking in my mind what i'm going to do but they uh the hole didn't come out exactly concentric with the uh, uh, OD and this pulley does wobble around a little bit so I don't like the way this one runs we're gonna take it back off and I want to put this one this uh, nice wood pulley on here in its place I did did do some uh, research on the different pulleys and I found out they they did uh, surface feet per minute and RPMs and, and to find out what they'll actually take. The, the cast iron is the, believe it or not, the weakest of all your pulleys. They'll take the least RPMs. You, you get them past their, you exceed their limit and they'll actually explode. And I don't really have too many cast iron, but I'm only running, I think, this is this is cast iron right there there's actually about three or four now the cast iron uh, are one piece pulleys and this is an old uh, inch and 11 shaft which I got from an old uh, old gentleman and I couldn't the the pulleys are are froze on the shaft I couldn't move them so I just moved what used what I could where it was at and uh, this one's probably running around uh, 180 RPMs. We're not running that fast. And then I found out that the uh, pressed steel, which are a little bit better than cast iron, they will uh, explode apart too when you exceed their uh, RPM rating. And they did a study on these right here, the wood. Now this is this is this one here is probably hundred years old and so it's not like it was when it was new 
got some pieces missing out of it right right here and uh, right up here and it's got some pieces missing quite here and there's a the piece but in a new condition they, now this is literature that I read from back in the, the late 1800s they could not get an RPM that would uh, explode a wooden pulley wooden pulleys would take at that you have to understand at that time the RPMs that they could reach and uh, so the the bottom line is the wooden pulleys are safer if you're going to high speeds than uh, cast iron and pressed steel which I will never uh, exceed in my uh, little shop here I want to show you something you're not going to really be able to see it but um, this is an acquisition I got I was going to show it but I had to winterize it and I'll do a video on this later when I take everything off and show you and uh, it's a secret right now so I'll show you that one later well if you got any comments and you like it uh, go ahead and leave them below one other thing I want to show you is uh, I changed my uh, index this is right here is uh, number number two more taper and then I put my number this is number four up here and uh, I kind of rearranged things a little bit so I got my twos and fours there and then over here is the number number threes all right uh, leave a comment thanks bye